Hi, welcome back to another video. My name is Tony with Quick Tech Solutions, and today I want to share with you a first look at the Grandstream GWN 7822P network switch. This is a layer 3 multi gigabit switch from Grandstream. On the front panel here, you have your Grandstream branding and model information. As I slide my finger across, the first 16 ports you see are gigabit Ethernet ports. The next eight ports, the ones enclosed in the turquoise bluish color, those are 2.5 gigabit Ethernet ports. Those also support PoE++. As I slide over, we have four SFP++ ports, a console port, there's a reset hole down here, and then you have your status lights. There's a power light, there's an RPS light, and a system light. Now, on the side of the unit, you have two fans for your air outtake. You do have your holes for mounting on a network rack, and I suppose this Kensington lock, which is situated right in the middle of where the mounting bracket would be, that would be, I guess, if you're just leaving it set on a desk or a shelf somewhere. And then on the back of the unit, you have your RPS port, and it's a 54 volt RPS port. Then you have your labeling, your serial number, your MAC address, and your password. Each Grandstream device has unique individual passwords. You have your power port, and then below that you have your port for anti-trip. So it's a little plastic device that plugs into this hole here to keep the power port from actually pulling out. And then you have your air intake venting on the side here. And then on the bottom of the unit, there's really nothing except indications in the corners for rubber pads that you can stick on that are included in the box if you are going to keep this device set up on a desk. Now included in the package is also a Grandstream user manual, the power cord, the mounting brackets, and inside here you also get the rubber sticky feet. Here's the anti-trip, the power cord anti-trip piece of plastic I talked about. Here's your grounding wire. And then here's the screws in this little bag to mount it in a network rack. Speaking of the grounding wire, what I did omit showing you on the back, next to the power port all the way on the end is your grounding lug right here. All right, so next we're gonna take a look at some of the features. All right, looking at the spec sheet, before we get into the 7822P, I do want to mention there is an eight port version, which is the GWN 7821P. It has eight 2.5 gigabit ethernet ports supporting PoE++ and two SFP++ ports, as opposed to the four SFP++ ports on the 7822P, and you also get the additional 16 gigabit ethernet ports on the 7822P. Scrolling down a little, let's look at some of the features. We've already discussed the configurations of the eight and 24 port models. They both support PoE, PoE Plus, and PoE Plus Plus. Supports deployment in IPv6 and IPv4 networks. It has features such as fault detection, device protection, dual boot, and more. It has support for access control lists, Management options include the embedded controller, GDMS networking, GWN manager, Grandstream's free cloud and on-premise network management platform, CLI management, and also through GWN router. Built-in QoS for prioritization of the network, and then supports stacking, which is pending at this time, for easy management on one interface while creating redundant backup between multiple devices. Let's just scroll down a little bit more. I just want to highlight some of these things here. So for the GWN7822, that's on the right side here, the right column. The SFP Plus ports do support DAC cables, but they must be either greater than or less than five meters. And as far as the fiber modules, you have single mode, 10G modules, it supports four. Multi-mode, it supports four. But if you're using the RJ45 transceivers, it only supports two and then the note here says the rj45 10 gig modules must be interval inserted and i'm assuming that's because those get super hot all right so as far as link aggregation groups the 7822p supports 14. the integrated power supply is 420 watts 54 volts 
Now the external redundant power supply is 54 volts or 300 watts. Maximum output power per PoE port, 30 for the first 16 gigabit ethernet ports, and then 60 watts for ports 17 through 24, the 2.5 gig ports. The total max PoE power output is 360 watts for the switch. And then as far as the rest of the specs, I'll put a link to the spec sheet down in the video description as far as if you want to check out the switching, routing, multicast, and the QoS, all the different features that it supports. And one last note I want to say on the switch is it's a pretty big switch as far as it does fit into a network rack. However, as far as depth, it's just shy of 12 inches. Okay, I'm signed into the GWN 7822P. We're looking at the system info under the overview tab. Now, this switch has a lot of the same features as other switches I've done in the past. A couple of more because it's a layer three switch. However, if I were to go through every single item in the left menu, this video can go on for hours. So I'm just gonna touch on these features briefly. And if you want any more information, you can let me know down in the comments. However, we're looking at the system overview page and you can see it's got device name. You can edit that name if you want by clicking here. Up in the upper right hand corner, you can see I have it connected to the GWN router. It says here, but it's actually the GCC 6010 under Let's see, management VLAN information, default gateway, it gives you a bunch of information. You have your graph here on the right side, your, your device temperature, 44 degrees Celsius. And then you have your system events down here, the fan status, the power supply that's being used is the built-in. I don't have anything connected to the redundant power supply at this time. If we take a look at the port info tab quickly, you can see that I have a 2.5 gig device plugged into port 17, which is one of the eight 2.5 multi-gig ports. And that device happens to be my Ugreen NAS. And then I have it uplinked to one of my other switches just with a one gig SFP connection. I don't have any 10 gig fiber modules at this point in time. All right, so that said, interesting fact though here, even though now I'm in the switch interface itself and it's displaying this information correctly, but if I switch over to the GCC 6010 and we take a look and you can see here it is, GWN 7822P, so the GCC can manage this switch. However, if we take a look at the ports, you can see here it's displaying the SFP port correctly, which is the one gig connection, but it's not showing the 2.5 gig connection in the GCC. Now it's interesting because the gray means that the link is not in use or the link is down. But if you look closely, it's acknowledging that something's plugged in because it's showing a darker gray than the other ports. So that's interesting, but here's your color code right up here for the different connections. Anyway, I just wanted to point that out. So I'll probably open up a ticket with Grandstream and just report that, that the GCC is not displaying the port information properly. Under switching, you have your basic port settings. Again, this is all of the very similar uh, to other GWN switches I've, I've covered in the past. You have port statistics, loopback detection, which is off by default, port auto recovery, pretty cool feature. You can select from the list here, let's say broadcast storm control, if for some reason it causes a port to be disabled after the time you specify here, it will re-enable the port. So that's a really cool feature. You get link aggregation, you get your lag settings, LACP, MAC address tables, static MAC addresses, black hole addresses. So if you have an untrusted device you don't recognize, you can add it to the black hole list. So that's a pretty cool feature. You have your VLANs here and you can see because I adopted it to the GCC, it's picking up my VLANs and all the port settings, the port members and everything else that goes along with that. Spanning tree, global settings, port settings, MST instance, MST port settings by default spanning tree is off. And again, I know I'm going quickly. It would take forever to cover every single option here in detail. The point being that this switch is a full featured switch. 
Under the IP section, you have your VLAN, IP interface, your DHCP server, DHCP relay, ARP table information, neighbor discovery, DNS settings. So you have all that under IP. It supports multicast IGMP snooping and MLD snooping. Under routing, you can see all the different routing protocols that it supports. You have your route policies down here. So again, a fully featured network switch. By the way, very cost effective for what it offers. It retails at 340 US dollars. Under PoE, you have your global PoE settings. Again, 360 watts total PoE power. Your interface here. We can edit each of the individual ports if we need be. QoS is quite extensive. In fact, I'm hoping to dive in and learn more about how to properly configure all of these different settings. But you can see it's very extensive QoS. Then under security, you have storm control, port security, port isolation, access control lists, IPv4, IPv6 access control list, MAC address control list, and more. IP source guard, IP version 6 source guard, anti-attack, DAI radius. So a ton of stuff here. Under maintenance, you have the ability to upgrade. You can manually upload a firmware file. You could do it over the network. And we are up to date with the, the latest version, by the way. We have our diagnostics built in, logs, ping, ping watchdog, trace routes, mirroring, fiber modules, copper tests, one-click debugging, management platform, connection diagnostics. I believe I covered this in another video. Backup and restore. You can factory reset, do an upload of a restore configuration file, SNMP, RMON, LLDP, energy saving, alerts. You can set your alerts here. Under system, you have your basic settings. You can obviously rename the device here, set the location, set the NTP server, the time zone. Under access control, you have web service management, SSH remote, management platforms, management ACL hardware base, management ACL software base, user management, time policies, so yeah, tons and tons of features. So there's a first look at the Grandstream GWN 7822P, a multi-gig layer three network switch. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. That's about it for now. Take care.